Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Out Astro Photography. We're going to be doing a quick video today on how you can really start colorizing your nebula photos with one shot color cameras, but with some very easy to use tools in PixInsight. Two to be exact that I've been playing around with, with a lot over the past few months and I wanted to share with you and how easy it is to really make these nebula photos that you take really begin to shine. We're going to be using two processes known as Narrowband Normalization and Create Hubble Palette OSC. Yeah, you heard that right. We're going to be creating Hubble Palette kind of nebulas which is a one shot color camera. I've done a video with the ASCAR filters where you can actually take hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and sulfur 2 and create those images, but if you don't happen to have one of those and just happen to use only a dual narrowband filter like the Optolong L Ultimate, like I'm using for this example today, you can get those same results as well with those wonderful colors that you see, those golds, those blues, the reds, the magentas, you know, all the colors of the rainbow. So we're going to be digging right into it and with the example image I'm going to be using today is a one that I have taken about a month ago which is a very wide field view of the Rosette Nebula and the Christmas tree cluster all into one separate view. You can see just right out of the bat I've already done dynamic background extraction, I've done blur exterminator, and I have stretched this image here because this one we are going to be using narrowband normalization. And you can see we have a huge star field in here straight after doing SPCC, spectrophotometric color calibration. And you can see we already got some decent colors in here, some nice reds around the Christmas tree cluster. You can see some of those greens popping up. And it looks like some more greens towards areas here, indicating that we do have some nebulosity through there. And then, of course, the famous Rosette Nebula, or the Skull Nebula. You can see we have a lot of those nice reds there, straight out of the camera without doing any color -ing, uh, calibration. Now, I definitely recommend when using narrowband no normalization, that you remove the stars because you want to try and preserve those stars as best as you can. So I already went and removed the stars, so we're just left with this starless image. Now, where you're going to find narrowband normalization, there is going to be a repository that I will be putting down in the description below. You can put it into your Pixking site. It is free to the public, so that's the wonderful thing. Once you have that installed, all you gotta do is just go to processes, all processes, and find narrowband normalization. Now you're left with this window here where you can find a whole bunch of different options to play with. We have whatever palette you're gonna be using, which the default one is HOO, but there's also different variations like SHO, HSO and HOS. You have different lightness modes, blend modes, and all that good stuff. So we're going to be trying out a few different color combinations here. We're going to be expanding this out a little bit so you can see it better. So here's what we're going to be working with. Make sure to hit the preview button so you can see what we are doing. Now right off the bat, when you open up narrowband normalization using the default settings, you're left with this where the hydrogen alpha is more of that goldish color and the oxygen is kind of more of that bluish. So this is kind of like one variation of being able to automatically have those colors be quite dynamic, but things get a little bit more different when you start changing the blend modes. This only works for the HOO. You have two, three different blend modes to be working with. Mode one, two, and three. Mode one is where you have this color palette of gold for hydrogen alpha and kind of like an ice blue for your oxygen. But if you want more of a traditional HOO palette where you have your reds and your greens, that's what mode two is. We start to see a little bit of more of that ice blue and those reds being picked up as well. And you can also adjust the blend mode 
to see if you want to have more of that oxygen poking through or more of that hydrogen kind of being more of a dominant aspect of this and you can also down here in the channel controls you can actually control the amount of the oxygen boost but definitely be careful when using the o3 boost because you don't want to use too much because it will bleed around the outsides of the image so you have to kind of use that sparingly and just depending on what kind of blend mode that you want to use and then of course blend mode 3 it's kind of more of like this weird purplish magenta color but still keeping the hydrogen alpha in that nice gold but what if you want to make something of a hubble palette sho well select the palette hit sho and voila you have an sho image which basically kind of mimics the sulfur that you're missing for your original data and you also have control over the scnr so you see that many areas here are this really strong green but you kind of want to make it more blue just take that slider and it becomes a little bit more blue as well boost up the oxygen a little bit so you can kind of see the oxygen really poking out there in the center which is very strong in the rosette nebula and then you also have control over that faux sulfur too which is more of that red so you kind of give that red a little bit more of a punchier look to it as well but this is just how easy it is with this wonderful tool here and you can also adjust the shadow points so you can make the background darker or if you want to make your overall highlights you know brighter you have control of all of that in this one simple tool and then if something seems like it's a little bit too dark like this you have a brightness tool where you can punch out the brightness throughout the entire image. That is just one very useful way of using this tool here. And then you can have a whole bunch of different color combinations and go into and really fine tune the colors that the way you want. But this is definitely the easiest way to really bring out the colors of your final image. But that's only one option that you can do to really bring any HOO palettes or SHO, we can also use something else known as Cree Hubble Palette OSC, which is part of another repository system where you can also use Graxpert as well. This one is located under scripts and toolbox. I'll have the repository for this one as well down in the description below. But you go over to scripts, toolbox, and you can find Cree Hubble Palette from OSC. This is kind of in the similar aspect, but this uses a little bit of a different technique. This will literally subtract the channels, your reds, your greens, and your blues. It will linear fit them. It will combine the channels and make that false S2 channel with the luminance filter. Well, with the luminance layer overall. So you already kind of get an image just like this. Now I haven't stretched this one at all because you don't need to for this one. You can do the stretching a little bit later on. So right off the bat, you kind of don't really have a whole lot to mess with different kinds of colors, but you have different palettes to use a lot more than the narrowband normalization. So right off the bat, we have the traditional HOO and right off the bat it looks really good from this too you just don't have that nice color there in the center portions of the rosette nebula but everything else like the stars and stuff look great but then if you want to do the traditional sho hubble palette you just select that it'll take a little bit of time and there you go you got your typical kind of right off the bat look for the hubble palette you know the hydrogen alpha as the greens you kind of see the icy bluish a little bit for the oxygen but you know beyond this point you have to really kind of manipulate the colors for you to get sho but there's also different variations like hso which kind of has more of that goldish look for the hydrogen alpha we have a little bit of a dollar color for the oxygen you can see it's a really strong oxygen not too far away from the center of the Christmas tree cluster. But you also have other things like the Forex palette, if you're familiar with that. Now, the Forex SHO is one of my favorites of all because you kind of blend a little bit of the traditional HOO, but you still get the look of a SHO palette in general, especially when you really start playing with the colors. You also have the Forex HOO as well 
which also is just another traditional way like that. You can see the difference is not all that much. And then we have also known as Dream Please, which I'm not entirely sure what that one is. But this palette is very weird, and I'm not a big fan of this one. But this is just two specific tools here that you can use to really make a difference in your images with very little work. You can also change the black point on this as well. So you can darken the background even more if you wanted to with your images. And then all you would have to do is just hit OK. And it goes through the process here and when it actually creates more mask for you as well so you can really intricate the colors when you start going in towards curves transformation you can set a blending mask for this to really start enhancing the colors going forward now this process takes a little bit more over time but yeah this is what you're left with it ends up stretching the image there for you you have different clones for the oxygen, you have your hydrogen alpha mask, and you also have your faux S2 mask in general. So this is what I want to show you here just for this quick video of some useful tools that you can use in PixInsight just to make your life a whole lot easier because that's just my motto if why work harder when you can work smarter, especially with the tools supplied to you. So that will be it for this video. Leave a like and a comment down below and share it around for anyone else who will also enjoy this video so much. Hopefully I get some clear skies here soon so we can start imaging, getting ready for galaxy season. And always to remember, look up at the stars because those are the only stars that you will see in your lifetime. Clear skies and I'll see you next time.